Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my little introduction to our next uh, deeper session which is going to be continuing with our look at the book of Isaiah. Uh, back in October you'll remember we spent the evening looking in a very general way at the book of Isaiah and I was trying to really furnish you with some of the tools that you might need um, as you tackle this great prophetic work and in particular that session was designed to help me to get to grips with the the sort of larger structural and um, narrative aspects of the first part of Isaiah, which is often referred to as first Isaiah or early Isaiah, as I prefer to name it. And if you remember, I shared how throughout early Isaiah, we have this growing sense of judgment, coming judgment, judgment that would ultimately arrive in the form of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, who swept through the Near East, bringing destruction and captivity to all in his path in the late 8th century BC. And in the end, he would arrive at the walls of Jerusalem in around 707 BC. And we get a great description of his arrival and the events that unfolded in Isaiah 36 to 39. It's a really a moment that prefigures the end time um, peril of Jerusalem as the nation surround Jerusalem as described by prophets such as Zechariah. Um, and of course, first Isaiah doesn't just give us uh, plenty of prophetic insight into the end of all things, the apocalyptic Isaiah as I, I often call it, but it also speaks to us of a coming king, to us a son is born, to us a son is giving, given as it says, and he would be one who would sit upon David's throne, Emmanuel, God with us. And of course I, Isaiah is the book perhaps quoted more than any other um, by Jesus himself and by the gospel writers, so it's a, it's a book of great importance. And what we have between 1st Isaiah and 2nd Isaiah is this, this sort of bit in the middle, which I call missing Isaiah. It's around the 150 year period. And it's not because the things are missing, the prophecies are missing, but rather it's just really that a whole chunk of history has been leapt over. Um, and um, it, in one of these great prophetic leaps, as I sometimes call them. And in our session on the 11th of December, we're gonna be spending a little bit of time looking at what happened between 1st Isaiah and second Isaiah, it was like a massively formative period uh, in, the, in the Near Eastern geopolitics of the day. And it's, it's really difficult to understand late Isaiah unless you're willing to do a little bit of that history work in the middle. I always say that first Isaiah is about ruination and second Isaiah is about rebirth. And similarly, first Isaiah is about a coming son then second Isaiah is about a coming suffering servant. And I can't wait to tell you more about this sort of differing presentation of the coming Messiah that we find in the book of Isaiah across those two sections. Uh, but there's more than that. There's this sort of other hidden message uh, it, uh, right in the middle of second Isaiah um, that concerns Israel. And really by the time that those chapters were penned, or the, the period that they're speaking into, Isaiah 40 to 66, everything had changed. The small kingdom of Judah had withstood the attack of the Assyrians under Sennacherib, and now it had been destroyed by the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar. The people of Judah had been killed or exiled, but now there is this sort of hint of return that we read of in 2nd Isaiah. And the suggestion is over and over that God was about to do something new, about to do something completely unexpected, and he was gonna birth a new Israel. But these are really big themes hidden away uh, in that rich poetic language of the prophets. And these great motifs of the coming of the Messiah, but also the rebirth of a nation and the ultimate apocalyptic fulfillment of God's purposes for his people, they're all there in 2nd Isaiah, and we're going to be exploring those. So with all that in mind, we've got a, look, a lot to look forward to on the 11th of December. I hope it's going to be a stimulating evening that will encourage you to go deeper into God's Word and deeper into what is perhaps one of the most significant uh, books of the Old Testament, if not the greatest piece of literature to come out of the ancient world. So join me at Chowna Church, 7pm on the 11th of December. I'd love to see you there.